Hey guys, it's Metagosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the electrical activity in your gut, such as the slow wave rhythms, as well as the spike potential. And you recall that during the spike potential, calcium is going to enter into the muscle. Today, we'll talk about what happens when calcium enters into your smooth muscle. It's going to bind calmodulin. Recall that calcium as an ion is more abundant extracellularly. And in my biochemistry playlist, I told you that you can guess the function of the enzyme based on the name. A kinase is an enzyme that adds phosphate. A phosphatase is the opposite. It's an enzyme that removes phosphate. Once calcium enters into the cell, it will bind calmodulin inside smooth muscles. Calmodulin ends in IN, which means it's a protein most of the time. Modulin, because I will modulate calcium. So the calcium will come and bind this calcium modulating protein, and then it will activate kinase. Kinase will add phosphate, i.e. phosphorylates its target. How many types of muscles do we have? We have three, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and smooth muscles. Where do we find calmodulin? Smooth muscles. Why is that? Because smooth muscles do not have troponin. Instead of troponin, they have calmodulin, which is a calcium modulating protein. Believe it or not, calmodulin is similar in structure and function to troponin C, because troponin C used to bind calcium. That's why we call it troponin C. Here is everything you need to know about smooth muscles. Please pause and review. Don't forget their second messenger is calmodulin. Who's the first messenger then? Calcium is the first messenger. Calmodulin is the second messenger. Do you remember the hormone signal transduction pathways? Yeah, we talked about them before in my endocrinology playlist. The calmodulin system is another second messenger system. And calmodulin is here again. Calcium is going to enter through this voltage-gated calcium channel. It will bind calmodulin, which will activate a kinase, which will phosphorylate synapsin. Synapsin is a protein at the synapse, at the axon terminalis, and this will free the acetylcholine vesicles from the cytoskeleton. Now, acetylcholine is free to exocytose and leave. In the last video, we talked about slow waves versus spike potentials. Spike potentials are the true action potentials, which means we reach threshold, which means we do cause actual contractions, thanks to calcium influx to cause depolarization. Once calcium enters, what's going to happen? It's going to bind calmodulin. Here is calcium entering into the muscle, binds calmodulin, which activates kinase. The myosin kinase is an enzyme that adds phosphate to myosin. Now the myosin light chain is now phosphorylated, which means active. But before adding the phosphate, the myosin light chain was without phosphate, i.e. passive and relaxed and dilated. But once you phosphorylate the myosin light chain, it adds phosphate to it, it becomes active, which means contracting and constricting. So that's how you contract your smooth muscle. However, if you want to relax your smooth muscle, you need to talk to a phosphatase, which is an enzyme that removes phosphate from the myosin light chain phosphate to convert it to myosin light chain without phosphate, which will cause relaxation or dilation. What are the facilitators of relaxation? Arginine, nitric oxide, guanylate cyclase, GTP, cyclic GMP, protein kinase G, and many medications including hydralazine, nitroprusside, nitrates, sildenafil, sildenafil, verdenafil, minoxidil, and diazoxide. Minoxidil and diazoxide are potassium channel openers. When potassium leaves, the cell becomes hyperpolarized, i.e. inactive, i.e. relaxed. Nitric oxide, arginine, guanylate cyclase, GTP becomes cyclic GMP, activates protein kinase G, phosphatase is active, removes the phosphate from the myosin light chain. Now the myosin light chain is without phosphate, which means inactive, which means relaxation of smooth muscles, such as your blood vessels. That's why these medications are used to treat hypertension. So pause and review phosphorylation versus dephosphorylation, contraction versus relaxation of smooth muscles, which includes the muscles in the wall of your gut and the muscles in the wall of your blood vessel. If you like this video, check out my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionatis.com. I also have a general pharmacology course, tons of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, also at medicosisperfectionatis.com. Moreover, there is a surgery high yield course on the same website. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.